Okay, guys. It's crazy here today. Oh. But I gotta tell you, this cake was really good. Okay, we're gonna preheat our oven. I'm on convection, so I go 375, knocks it back to. You'll want an oven at, one, at 350. Okay, I'm gonna make a low inflammatory cake as much as I can here. I've got five eggs, and I've done a half a cup of my coconut cream here. This is the Chaz. I really like this, it's for whipping cream, so it's a bit more stiff, it has xanthan gum in it. So half a can of that. I'm gonna use coconut oil, and I'm gonna use about a quarter cup. I'm gonna use a little blob of vanilla. I'm using vanilla paste, but any will do. I think that's a couple teaspoons of baking powder. So I've been finding I don't actually do it well with a ton of um, cocoa because of the caffeine content. So I'm just going to use about a quarter cup, but in past times I've probably used a lot. I liked it really rich. So, up to you. Okay, so I just give that a whip, get the coconut nicely incorporated. This here I have at the bottom um, a quarter cup of coconut flour, a quarter cup of almond flour, and a quarter cup of quinoa flour. So I'm going to throw that in. You could use um, any combo. I would say just try to make sure uh, one of these is pretty absorbent, like quinoa is pretty absorbent. Almond flour is not, coconut somewhere in the middle. So you could use like ground oats into flour. You could use ground chia, ground flax for this quarter here, but I'm using quinoa. So that can go in. You have to have a flour that's kind of going to make it cakey. So I'm using this Best uh, Besties by Wholesome Yum, the allulose. It actually has some monk fruit in it too. I would have preferred to just get allulose, but it was sold out. So I've got a quarter cup here, and I'm probably going to do one more quarter cup, so a half a cup total. So half a cup's in there. I'm just going to add a pinch of salt and a drizzle of maple. Okay, here's my salt. Here's my maple. You could probably get you know, up to a quarter cup or whatever. That'll add some nice flavor. Okay, I'm gonna whip it up. This might be a little on the small side. It's an eight by six and a half. I've greased it with coconut oil, and I'll get the cake in and we'll have a peek at it. That looks actually pretty good. Perfect. Ganache, I'm gonna use the remainder of my coconut cream on top of my 70% chocolate chunks. So probably have about a cup of chips and just one scoop of the coconut cream because I don't want to nuke it all. This will just kind of keep it from sticking to the microwave bowl and just nuke it for one minute. All right, so that's one minute. And I can tell once I stir this, it'll be good. Let's stir it up. Okay, so that melted that very nicely and now I'm gonna add in the rest of this and stir it again. All right, so I added it in. Now I've got this nice creamy dairy-free ganache and I can pop it in the fridge if I want it to set up more than that, or it can be a nice sauce. Very lovely and delicious. Okay, there's the cake. That was actually 40 minutes in my oven, and now it's sat and cooled. I'm just gonna cover it up till serving. Okay, I won't lie, I totally forgot about you guys on one of this recipe. So, these are one of my final pieces, and I just, I'm gonna, this was in the fridge, so hopefully it's thawed my ganache here. But, oh yeah, now it's, oh see, it's getting all smooth. Okay, so you can go like that. And if you wanna do, I made like, um, whoa, Black Forest shortcakes. So you just put like the cherries right on top. And then like the whipped cream. And I do have a chocolate sauce, but I'm not gonna do that. But, oh, that's not it. There it is. Um, I'm not gonna eat it though, because it's sugared. So I'm gonna do it like this. You could use a coconut whip or whatever whip you like. 